Hello and welcome, my name is Brandon. This is Born Again XJW, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a listen in on a secretly recorded judicial committee meeting. Now this is actually gonna be part six or seven, I'll need to double check that, guys, uh, to a series that I've been doing of this particular judicial committee meeting, uh, and the two people involved is a man named Jesse and his wife, McCall, and you'll even hear their little baby in the background uh, making some sound, which is actually pretty cute. Um, but anyways, uh, on this channel, we offer scriptural or biblical rebuttals against the teachings of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, sometimes we take a look at their magazine articles and rebut them. Other times we do commentaries like the one that you're about to see today. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, then go ahead and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and all that good YouTube stuff. Otherwise, uh, I would suggest that you go ahead and uh, check out the videos in this series, uh, one through six, I think. Um, that way you're a little bit more up to speed on what we're talking about today. Uh, other than that, let's just go ahead and dive right in. Truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. There's things in the Bible that you, that you don't agree with or you don't... It's fi figure, figuring out and have questions on, yeah. And have you taken steps to, to get answers to those questions? Yeah, which... We want to write and get an answer to that question about the Imperial Bible Dictionary quote. Yeah. So, okay, well, that's, that's one point about the cross. Um, is that the only question you have that you think mm -hmm. that might come to service that you... No, there's others, too. So Have you, have you taken steps to get, get answers to those? Yeah, we're in the process, yep. Could I ask you, for example, I, I know the cross... Um, and, and some of those astronomy points, there's, what else is Well, there? I don't think it could be just answered like right here. I just, no, I don't mean the answer, but I'm just curious. Um, or if you're not comfortable. No, I don't really want to discuss that. Okay. Yeah, thanks for asking though. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, I... I um, you know, there was something too when that when that question came up about um, uh, Brother Jackson, some um, deposition was it a deposition he gave some he gave a testimony at testimony. the Royal Commission. And you said you Googled it. Um, how how is it that you know, and I ask this because I've I've heard some who do that is they'll go on the internet and they'll Google just they'll Google Jehovah's Witnesses and it pulls up all kinds of information. Uh, about Jehovah's Witnesses, and some of the information is very critical. Some is, some of it is apostate. Um, do you peruse any of that information? I can tell you how it came up on our. Well, I'm going to ask because okay. Jesse. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm open to looking at what people have to say, and, and then I disseminate whether it's true or not. I I do my research. I don't ever hear what someone has to say and then go, oh, it, it's got to be that. I always do my research. Yeah, because you were saying you, you do a lot of study. Yeah. Yeah. Do you say, you, would you say, well, let me, where do you, where do you do the bulk of your study? What's the source of uh, the source? The, a number of things. I, I'll use the Watchtower Library. I go online and look at PDFs. Um, so there's that source, and that's all I do. The PDFs, there's so many books that you can read and then uh, see the context of things and so forth rather than just one quote. So a little bit of everything. I don't like just have 10 go-to sources. Do you suspect or you know that is there any information from apostate sources? Well, there's... Apostates probably used some of the sources that are just recognized that you can get at a library. So do you, do you think you're coming across material that the apostates produce and put out there? Uh, maybe, possibly. Do you, you think that's, um, what, do, you, do you think that's safe? Because you know what I the think Bible it, says about apostates. I think it's unsafe to to um, not check into things. If uh, someone says something, I'm going to check into it, be like the Bereans. But I, I don't write people off completely. 
I remember though the Bereans studied scriptures. Right. Yeah. Right. I study. The, I study the scriptures and inspect what is said. Yeah. How about you, Lord McCall? You uh, say something about research and the, material. For the specific example of the royal commission, or just in general, you know, so to ask you the same point. The information you come across. Do you think some of it might be generated by apostates? Well, we know they're out there, so. If JW.org uses the internet, I'm sure, I'm sure other sources do as well, so I'm sure in a search you'll come across it, absolutely. Does that concern you, that you might be considering apostate information? Because, you know, apostate, you know, in, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, you know, it's actually uh, talking about, um, if, if it's a definition of apostate sources, Okay, <clears throat> there's a couple of points that that whole section was really loaded with a lot that I would like to touch on. So I will try and be as quick as I possibly can because I value your time. Um, first point that he brought up, he said that he was writing into the branch about the reference to some sort of an encyclopedia um, about the cross and how it's pagan or something like that. Um, I do remember hearing about this. I specifically tried to go and seek for the encyclopedia that was being quoted. I wasn't able to find it. I think it may have been behind a paywall. Thankfully, I can point you to a resource that I do trust, and that is uh, Mike Winger, Bible Thinker. I will try and post a link to the specific video he did on this very subject, and it concerns Jehovah's Witnesses and the cross and their objections to it, and it specifically goes into the uh, quote from this encyclopedia, uh, encyclopedia or Bible dictionary, I can't remember, that they misquote, which um, I have other videos about their misquotations. The Watchtower, in my opinion, is skilled at this now, about cherry picking and quote mining from sources that actually disagree with them in order to make it look like their point is all backed up. In fact, uh, you heard a jab from Jesse in there where he said, I like to uh, go to sources where they have multiple sources linked, not just one quotation. And that actually was a jab at the Watchtower. Maybe the Elder caught it, maybe he didn't. Um, he seemed very focused on his task at hand, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But I want you to see how in there, um, McCall actually went to go answer the question that was being asked, and the Elder just cut her off. And that's just, again, it's sort of this, um, I don't want to say misogyny, because I think that word is so overplayed now, especially nowadays. But there just there definitely is a lot of disrespect for women inside of the organization. Um, so I just I found that sort of unsettling and a little bit disrespectful. He just completely cut her off and just shot straight to Jesse. But I'm sure you could hear by the questions he was asking, he was trying to lead Jesse and McCall to say a specific thing. Yes, I researched off of apostate sources. Now what started the conversation off the elder actually brought up, he said, a deposition or something that um, Jeffrey Jackson, I think, is the governing body's name. I don't really commit these guys' name to my memory because I, I just don't want to waste my time doing that. But anyways, I think the governing body member's name was Jeffrey Jackson. And I'm almost positive that this elder is actually aware of the Australian Royal Commission. I'm sure he's actually aware that Jeffrey Jackson was called to the stand to give a testimony. And he may or may not have watched the video where Jeffrey Jackson actually lies on the stand. That is available for anyone to research. That also is a public court case that you can find online. That is not apostate material. So again, what started off this whole line of questioning to lead to the apostate material, and this is where you're getting your information from, is that um, testimony from a governing body member who is lying on the stand of the Australian Royal Commission in regards to child sex abuse inside of the organization and how it's not handled at all. Um, so this elder knows very well that this is not apostate material. That is what started his line of questioning though because he's not actually interested in the truth and I need you to hear this one more time if you're a Jehovah's Witness listening to this. This elder is not interested in the truth He's interested in convicting them of a crime that they did not commit. And the crime would be, you went on apostate websites, therefore you are an apostate now. Okay, or you're being influenced by apostates, or you're becoming demon-possessed, or whatever things the elders would like to say. It's dangerous, is basically what they're saying. 
So anyways, they're about to get into the Watchtower's definition of apostasy, which I've covered in other videos. It is not the historical definition. It doesn't fit any definition. It is one that they have made up, which is a very cult-like thing to do. It's like 1984 manifest. You know, we're, we're going back and changing history and the meaning of words. And it's just so blatantly obvious if you understand cult mind control and cult tactics. So anyways, um, I don't want to add more onto that because I think there's more to come, but we're about to get into the snooze fest that is the Watchtower's definition, fake definition of apostasy. Here we go. You'd like to read that, Jess? Yeah, it's uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. However, the inspired word clearly says that in later times, some will fall away from the faith paying attention to misleading, inspired statements and teachings of demons. So you think there's a real danger in, in things you may be reading or coming across? Yeah, there, there could be danger in what anyone says about anything. Yeah, so, but here it's pretty specific though, isn't it? It talks about inspired and in misleading, inspired statements. Yeah. What is, what is misleading? Is it something that you know you're being misled or is it, you know, it's taking you in a direction that you should not be going, right? Right. It's being misled. Right. And when you look at that and it says misleading, do you know you're being misled though? If it's I research it. And stuff? I research it. Just like the, that quote from the Imperial Bible Dictionary. I thought that was fascinating, uh, an old... 1874 dictionary mm -hmm. I wanted to read the context and found that actually yeah. there it was misleading the context shows that storos actually has four meanings and very likely jesus was killed on a cross because that's what the romans use during that time when they were world power so it's like well i've been misled because they left out those five paragraphs, why they do that. So I'm just being honest. I do my research and want to make sure that what people tell me is accurate, whether it's whatever source it may come from. So if Jesus had died on a cross, how does that affect you? What effect would that have? If you, if you learn and, and then you came to believe Jesus died on a cross, what effect would that have? I, I personally don't think it, it's important whether it's a stake or a cross, but if, if I find that people think that's, that is life or death or righteousness in God's eyes or Jehovah's eyes, then I, I'd be like, I feel sorry they think that way. But for me, that's not life or death. How about you, Nicole? Not life or death either. And, and that was one of the reasons I brought it up the first time is because I didn't think that it meant someone would die because they believe Jesus died on a cross. And then you said, do you think it matters to Jehovah's Witnesses, though? And I said, yes. So that left me wondering, like, <laughs> I don't even know if I know the truth now. Like, I need to research it and find out which way it is. And, and truly, I think it could go either way. And that was why I wanted to write into the branch and see if they had any more um, resources or if they could give me some other things to examine that maybe I didn't come across yet or something like that. I, again, I don't think it's salvation. I just thought... I kind of want to know now. <laughs> I just want to know what the truth is mm -hmm. about this. Sure. I don't want to worship the cross. <laughs> I don't want to bow down to it. I just want to be accurate. Again, there's so much that is covered in a short period of time um, because this is what it's like when you're talking to a fully indoctrinated, in this case, three fully indoctrinated Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, they bounce all around. Bah, 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 bah. So it's like, you know, we just listened to what, one and a half to two and a half minutes, something like that. And I could literally talk about this section alone for like 15 minutes, which I will not do, I promise. I'm gonna try and keep it quick. Um, okay, so they go into the definition, again, the made up definition of apostasy from the Watchtower. And one of the, um, one of the elders, you know, comes in and he thinks he has some sort of silver bullet to the whole argument. And he's like, you know, if it's misleading, if it's misleading, do you know you're being misled? And I'm really happy with Jesse's response because he fires back and he says, well, I do my research and misleading information can come from anyone, which is why I do my research. And he brings it full circle back around to the reference to that Bible dictionary or Bible encyclopedia. 
And he says, you know, when they pulled that one quote from that dictionary, they didn't include the other five that actually states that staros, star, staros, which is the Greek, you know, for, uh, you know, cross or a, an upright pole or anything like that, actually has four different definitions. Um, so they didn't include those five paragraphs. So in fact, um, they were misleading in that way. So what he did was he fired back at the organization and actually said, well, in this case, the watchtower is guilty of the misleading information that you are telling me is dangerous to my spiritual health. Now, this is interesting. After hearing all of that reasoning from Jesse, and I'm probably sure it either went straight over his head, option one, or option two, he knew exactly what Jesse was saying. Instead of hearing anything that Jesse said, what he decided to do was to make a very snide comment. What would that do for you if Jesus died on the cross? And I mean, my response to that, I actually, I liked Jesse's response. I liked McCall's response. McCall is saying, I just want to be accurate, um, which I think is what we should all be seeking to do. We need to find accurate historical truth, accurate present truth, and accurate future truth. Uh, but truth is consistent and it's eternal. Um, but my response would be, this wouldn't be a big deal if the watchtower did not make a big deal out of it. If the Jehovah's Witnesses did not make a big deal out of it. The Watchtower has produced entire magazines, quotes in their books, in their liter uh, literature, that is all about demonizing the cross and trying to convince people that the cross is a pagan symbol and that if it's crept into your teachings, then you are you know, part of uh, evil Christendom and you're part of false religion and Satan system of things. So the reason I say it's a snide comment that the elder made is because he's saying, you know, what would that do for you if Jesus was crucified on the cross? Well, for most people, it wouldn't do anything. It would just be sort of a, a moot point. It doesn't matter the shape that he was crucified on. It's why he was crucified in the first place. That's what's important. Um, the fact that he was crucified on a piece of wood or a tree is prophetic. That's important. So, but the actual shape of it, the Jehovah's Witnesses exclusively are the ones who have made that a big deal and have spent myriads of time trying to make that a big deal. So that's why I find this uh, very hypocritical coming from this elder. And um, as far as I can remember, that's all the points I have. So we're just going to keep right on going. Two, on that, because uh, I mean, when you remember the other reference that I gave you, that I sent you, gave you uh, as well, you know, regarding the cross. Uh, and so did you, cause, because uh, it was that uh, reference sort of conflicted with the rest of that, you know, the, um, the information in that uh, Imperial Bible. It sort of, it sort of, cause, cause that other reference said that there was no way that he died uh, on, a, on a, a cross. And then the other reference, because remember the branch in, in what they quoted, they, the reason they quoted that particular part of that uh, reference that you mentioned in that Imperial Bible was because again it was supporting the thought what they said you know it, from uh, earlier times it's the uh, the um, stake was you know it was, a, it was a long pole you know and then of course um the rest of that information in that um inferior uh, bible uh that reference it mentioned a lot of things that you know we don't believe as jehovah's witnesses and that's why they didn't you know, quote all those other, all other things, but that it, early on it mentioned that that was the stake the that was definition. used. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that I guess the the references just left me with more questions. Mm -hmm. And so but, I read them, and I just really wanted to mm -hmm. still write in yeah. and ask the branch. Okay. My question. Yeah, that's that's fine. But the in the in the, in the reasoning book, because I think that's where you got the reference mm -hmm. from initially. Right. But in the reasoning book, at the end of that, when it talked about the cross, remember it said that. Um, with the, uh, with the with the weight of evidence with the weight of evidence that shows that jesus would have died on a stake rather than a cross the the imperial bible dictionary says it was it was showing it was likely a cross yeah yeah right so that said that but the other reference in the material said that it, 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 right um, the the vines expository doesn't consider the history before the 15th century the the Imperial Bible Dictionary considers the history mm -hmm. before Jesus, and then during the Roman time, there was about three hundred year period where they they had the cross, mm -hmm. and that's likely what Jesus was killed on. Mm -hmm. But then, when the Roman power fizzled, 
the, it, it went back to like straight poles for people being killed. And so it pointed out that during Jesus' time, that's what I was trying to say, mm -hmm. that it likely was a cross because that was their common practice, a crucifixion. Yeah. I'm just wondering, so this, I'm, this is all historical stuff, right? Yeah, in, yes. <clears throat> and you understand like being through school and things like that, history always comes back because it's never written down correctly. They always make, oh, this makes changes here. That's why the books are always making changes in historical facts. Because people leave things out or they add things. They, they, don't, they don't put in things that are accurate. They think it's, they, this would make better reading or this would be better for my country or whatever. You know how it goes along there. And that to me, you know, it, it, I'm a, I like history myself, but I don't go along with all of it because I know that it was written by a guy or men. That, that wrote it all down and they wrote it towards the leading of what they were thinking. Mm -hmm. So sure. when you go thinking about those kinds of things, you think that's really accurate if, if men that weren't inspired of God wrote these things down and that's what you want to put your your faith in? Well, that, well, that, history? Well, that was well, just one of the references. I looked up a few scriptures and they also left me with some questions as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the reference you gave me said not to be dogmatic about the use of the the plurality of the word nails, mm -hmm. but it, the verse said it twice, and I thought, I don't know, it's, it's interesting to make a mistake once, but yeah. to make a mistake twice, but not be dogmatic about it, I just, that just wasn't enough of an answer for me, I just, mm -hmm. I just wanted to know more, mm -hmm. I guess, yeah. so and, I was really and, hoping to still be able to write in and, and ask, and um, <coughs> you know, ask a couple of their questions to get clarified, and hope for uh, just like a, a time to think, you know, mm -hmm. a time to think, and, and you know, evaluate information. Mm -hmm. Am I... Okay, wow. Uh, I actually can't put it any better than uh, McCall and Jesse in this instance because we have the other elder coming in and he... He actually... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. He actually defends the Watchtower saying the reason that they misquoted this Bible dictionary is because that part agreed with our teachings. So that's why they quoted it. And he says this with, like, it doesn't even cross his mind that that's wrong. <laughs> he's actually, he's coming to bat for them and saying that that's a good thing. Like, like this article, nine-tenths of it say that he was crucified, but the one-tenth that agrees with our teachings, we're going to go ahead and pull from that. And that's why they pulled from that. And that makes sense to him. The elders are not inspired of the Holy Spirit. They do not have any special knowledge. They do not have any special reasoning skills or logic skills. Clearly, this is like the reasoning I had with my friends when I was a 12-year-old child. These elders are little baby children men. And I mean that in the most derogatory fashion possible. He actually went to bat for the Watchtower misquoting a Bible dictionary. Then he said, did you read that other reference I sent you? More than likely, he got that from another source from Watchtower where they again misquoted something where Jesse actually explained it better than I could have because Jesse's aware of the source and he was saying they actually didn't consider the historical context of anything. Then we have Elder Number 3 comes in. Oh, man. Okay. With his 12-year-old schoolyard reasoning. And he says, well, you just can't believe anything in history because men have written it. You, you can't know anything then. If, that's, if that is your worldview, if that is what you want to plant your feet on and you want to stand on that truth that you can't know anything in history because men wrote it down, then that kind of shatters everything. I, I know he said not inspired of God, so he's not putting the Bible in that category. But um, we use extra biblical sources to validate what we actually see in the inspired holy scriptures old testament and new that's what actually makes the bible so compelling is because it can be backed up historically that's why we put our faith in it not because it gives us the the feel goods but because you can actually go and verify it historically and that's what they were bringing out jesse and mccall were both saying you know there's there's a historical context where the romans were in control for 300 years it was their tradition to have two intersecting wooden beams on which people were crucified. And again, the shape is not important. The Jehovah's Witnesses have made the shape important. No other Christian denomination has done that. 
Before I forget, McCall brought up a very good point, and I'm trying to remember which scripture, which scripture she's referencing. It's either in Luke or John, I'm trying to remember. But um, they use the plural nails, um, and I think it's referring to the nails in his hands, but the Greek uses the plural nails uh, twice in, like a, in the same verse or a series of verses or something like that. Uh, and then, you know, they were probably sent a publication from the Watchtower saying not to be dogmatic about the plural use of the Greek word nails. Again, this is just, this is changing the scripture to fit your theology. You're not reading the Bible and it says nails and you're going, you know what? I believe in one single upright pole. And if they use two nails in one set of hands, that doesn't make sense. But if you get two intersecting beams and you have to use two nails for two hands, that makes sense. So you know what we're going to do as students of the Bible, as students of truth, we're going to go ahead and change our doctrine back. And we're going to say, you know what, guys, we got it wrong. He was crucified on a cross. But the Watchtower doesn't do that. The Watchtower takes their teachings and they push it onto the scripture. In fact, even saying, ignore your lying eyes, ignore what you see, because even though you see a plural there, not once, but twice, and like I said, McCall brought up the scripture. I'm going to try and find it. Even though you see the plural there, you need to ignore that, not be dogmatic about it. Pot calling the kettle black. Not to be dogmatic about it, but to just trust the interpretation of men who are writing down historical fact. These men are not inspired, again, of the Holy Spirit. There are eight yahoos in New York, snake oil salesmen, who want free labor and they like to exercise their authority. They have that sickness of pride and wanting to exercise their authority over their fellow human beings. In this case, eight and a half million Jehovah's Witnesses. It's a sickness and it's a sin and they need to repent for it. So anyways, let's keep going. If the Imperial Bible Dictionary maybe was not the best representation of the subject, then why did they quote from it? Because and if they did, then why didn't they actually represent what those paragraphs were trying to say. But remember the point that they were supporting. The point, it's just like, you know, you got a newspaper article, right? And there's a reference that it makes, maybe the, maybe the whole article, maybe there's some, you know, er erroneous ideas, but maybe there's something in that article that does have, you know, validity. But and you may use that. They, they were actually saying that at one time people were killed on a pole. That was before the Romans. But they weren't saying that that's what Jesus was killed on. They said that when the Romans came into power, they crucified on a cross. Mm -hmm. They left out all that part. Mm -hmm. But, but, so but who that, said that? Who said the that? Imperial Bible Dictionary. Right. So I'm wondering why they, why they insisted on using it when that's but, their whole point was actually for the cross. The, the, that wasn't the whole point. Here, here in, the, uh, in the, the reference in the reasoning book, when it starts off, it talked about uh, notice it says, because the question is, why do the Watchtower publications show Jesus on a stake with his hands over his head instead of on the traditional cross? That was the question, right? And then it started off, it says, it talked about the Greek word cross in many modern Bible versions, torture stake in the New World, Trans New World Translation, it says, and then Storos, it says in classical Greek. Then it talked about <clears throat> the uh, it's, well, in classical Greek it says this word meant merely an upright stake or pill. Now that's the point, con the, the the point that they're making. Right. Then to support that, they say it, then then it, then it says what well, it says later. It also be it also came uh, to be used as an execution stake, having a cross piece. Then now then they quote from that uh, imperial. A Bible dictionary it said it acknowledges this <clears throat> and then it says what it says the Greek word for cross sorrows properly signified a stake an upright pole or piece of paling on which anything might be hung or which might be used of uh, in impaling or fencing in a piece of a piece of the ground <clears throat> and then it says and then it's still quoting from that reference it says even amongst the Romans, the cross from which our cross is derived appears to have been originally an upright, an upright pole. That they're supporting that. That's what it's they right. Say. They're they're acknowledging that the Romans recognized that 
the originally it was an upright pole with the Greeks because that's how the Greeks did it. But when the Romans came in and were executing and crucifying, it was on a cross member, and that's what the, the that's what those missing paragraphs said. And so they say right. that that's likely what Jesus was killed on. Right, but see, that's the reference, that reference history. But but in the, in the other reference material, it said just the opposite. Right. So now, so, so I'm wondering why they used the Bible, Imperial Bible Dictionary then. To that's, support that thought that it was an upright pole. But I, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to say that if the Bible Imperial Dictionary was here to represent themselves vocally, they would say, we're trying to say that the Greeks used a upright pole, that's recognized what Storos is, but when the Romans came and crucified, they did it on a cross, with a cross member piece. So that's what we're saying. We recognize the Greeks did it on a pole, and it took on a different definition when we executed. And that's what the whole thing is trying to say. They're not trying to say that the Greeks did it on a pole, and the Romans did it on a pole. But that, but that it said even amongst the Romans, the cross. Okay, I'm really gonna have to pause it there, unfortunately, because I don't want this video to get too long. But wow, 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 wow. Um, I, I hope if there's anyone who's on the fence as to whether or not this is the truth, can see the fallacies and the just the the lack of reasoning skills that this organization does. It doesn't equip you with anything. It doesn't teach you how to think critically. Again, I, I can't say anything more than, than Jesse hasn't said. Jesse is using sound reasoning, sound logic to say, you should never quote from an article that disagrees with your stance. And then he said, if they were verbally here or physically here to represent themselves, they would say that you are misrepresenting our article, the whole purpose behind why we wrote it. Again, this elder is going to bat for the organization and saying, no, it's okay that again, nine tenths of this article did not agree with what we teach, but it was one tenth right here, the part that we like what it says, that's why they referenced that part. And he has zero concerns with the morality of that or the ethics of that. He thinks it's perfectly fine to do so. He's actually rationalizing in his brain that that's a good thing and he's defending it. So I want you to hang on to two quotes real quick, and they're pretty much the same thing. You can't rationalize with an irrational person. You cannot reason with an unreasonable person. In this case, you know, the fact that Jesse and McCall were able to record their good behavior, they were able to record their sound reason and their sound logic, and then it's juxtaposed with these three elders who have the schoolyard reasoning of a 12-year-old child collectively between the three of them. You can see who's really planting their feet on the truth. And again, that's why, you know, every time you have some sort of, um, you know, encounter where you're evangelizing to a person or you're speaking about God or anything else like that, it's really important that you try and do so with gentleness and respect because maybe the person receives it well and that witness was for them, which would be amazing, right? But maybe you're in a more semi-public setting and uh, that person might be a little bit belligerent or you know something like that, but the people around you who you may not know are listening are actually getting a witness. And um, that is really encouraging. And I've heard multiple stories of that happening. I've even had a few examples in my life so anyways, we're going to have to call it there. There's like a few minutes left, but these few minutes, guys, could be packed with so much, uh, and that could lead to another video. I already foresee this video being like 35 to 40 minutes long with all the content we have here. So I want to thank you guys so much for making it to the end. Uh, I hope you appreciated the commentary, and if you had any thoughts in the comment section below, I always appreciate when you guys put a timestamp, and then um, that way I can go to that part of the video and figure out what you're commenting on, because sometimes I'm a little bit lost as to what you're commenting to. So make sure you put a timestamp uh, so that I know where to go in the video so that I have a better reference for your comment. I always appreciate your feedback and your comments in the comment section. Um, other than that, I want to thank you guys so much for watching till the end. I hope you have a wonderful evening and God bless. Truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God.